Step back in time, partner, to the days of outlaws and lawmen, where legends were born and history was forged in the fires of the Wild West. Meet David Allen Mather, better known as Mysterious Dave, a man of mystery, danger, and adventure. Subscribe to American Old West Tales and ride shotgun with us through the untamed frontier, where justice had a six-shooter and legends were born in the dust. Don't miss out on the stories of the Wild West's most enigmatic figures. Subscribe now, partner, and let's hit the dusty trail together. Y'all ready to rustle up some tales from the Old West? Subscribe to American Old West Tales now. David Allen Mather, more famous as the enigmatic Mysterious Dave, drew his first breath on August 10, 1851, in the bosom of the Massachusetts seaside, born to Ulysses and Lycia Mather. Dave hailed from a lineage of seafaring lawmen, sturdy English mariners of the seven seas. Mather took pride in his English roots, often seen donning regal blue and red attire, a habit he clung to even in his twilight years. In Massachusetts, he had kinfolk in the law enforcement trade, a kinship that kindled his own desire to wear the badge. A man of moderate stature, bearing square yet fragile shoulders, dark, piercing eyes, and a steadfast mustache, Mather was a man of scarce speech, which earned him the epithet Mysterious Dave. Though the yearning to be a lawman burned within Mather, he, like many a marshal of the Old West, straddled the thin line, sometimes upholding the law and just as frequently riding with outlaws. By the time Dave turned sixteen, his folks had ridden into the great beyond, leaving him and his kin, Josiah, to set their sights westward. It was around 1873 when Mather dipped his toes into the cattle-rustling waters of Sharp County, Arkansas. In 1874, he made his maiden appearance in the bustling Dodge City, Kansas, a place he'd returned to as both a lawman and an outlaw. Around the same time, Mather frequented the saloons of Denver, Colorado, with a pair of colts concealed beneath his coat. He kept a sharp eye on the faro, blackjack, and poker tables, yet never tried his luck in those games. By 1878, Mather had made his way to Mobiti, Texas, and joined forces with the likes of Wyatt Earp. Rumor had it that they ran a con game peddling gold bricks to unsuspecting folks in Mobiti. Come 1879, Mather joined forces with the notorious outlaw Dutch Henry Bourne, leader of a horse-thieving gang spanning from Kansas to eastern Colorado, New Mexico, and the Texas Panhandle. Mather found himself in cuffs alongside Henry Bourne but saw the light of day again. He soon faced accusations of involvement in a train heist near Las Vegas, New Mexico, but walked free after a trial. Subsequently, he was named a deputy Las Vegas marshal, becoming a member of the notorious Dodge City gang that cast a shadow over Las Vegas, New Mexico. Ooh. January 22, 1880, marked a fateful day when T.J. House, James West, John Dorsey, and William Randall swaggered through town, seeking trouble. When they entered the Close and Patterson Variety Hall, Marshal Joe Carson requested they disarm, but they scoffed. A wild shootout ensued, resulting in Carson's demise and Deputy Dave Mather taking down Randall and West. Dorsey and House, though wounded, managed to slip away. On February 5th, Dorsey and House's whereabouts were uncovered. They holed up at Juan Antonio Dominguez's residence in Buena Vista, 30 miles north of Las Vegas. A posse, led by J.J. Webb and featuring Dave Rudabaugh and five other brave souls, surrounded the dwelling and demanded the surrender of the fugitives. Dorsey and House obliged after receiving assurances of protection from the town's citizens. Alas, those promises proved empty, as mere hours later, vigilantes relieved the jailers of their burdens, hauling the captives to the plaza's windmill for a lynching. Mrs. Carson took a stand, opening fire on the lynch mob, thwarting their grim designs. Following Marshal Carson's untimely departure, Mather ascended to the post of Las Vegas Marshal. However, his tenure was short-lived, as accusations of reckless shooting in his capacity as marshal led to his departure. He briefly served as assistant marshal in El Paso, Texas, but after an altercation in a brothel where he suffered minor injuries, he found his way back to Dodge City, this time as assistant city marshal. Upon his return, Dodge City simmered with vice, defiance of the law, and a growing tension between reformists and the status quo. The Dodge City War erupted in the spring of 1883, followed by pressure from the Santa Fe Railroad to restore order. Amidst this turmoil, 
David Mather assumed the role of Dodge City's assistant marshal and co-owner of the Opera House Saloon on Front Street. The saloon's prominent location irked the city council when Mather transformed it into a dance hall, leading to a citywide ban on such establishments. Strangely, another dance hall owned by Thomas Nixon escaped the council's scrutiny, purportedly due to its remote location. For months, Nixon and Mather battled for dominance. In 1884, the city authorities replaced Mysterious Dave with Nixon as assistant marshal, igniting tensions that had simmered for months. On the fateful evening of July 18, 1884, Nixon drew his gun and fired at Mather, but only managed to send a few splinters his way. Three days later, Mather approached Nixon from behind and discharged four fatal rounds into his back, ending his rival's life. Mather was acquitted of Nixon's murder, but he claimed another life the following year, prompting Marshal Bill Tillman to run him out of town. Afterward, Mysterious Dave took up the mantle of city marshal in various small towns in Kansas and Nebraska. Eventually, he made his way to San Francisco, California, and embarked on a ship bound for Vancouver. Some tales recount his enlistment in the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, where he showcased his sharpshooting skills with a pair of six-shooters and a trusty steed. It's said that he continued to sport the royal blue and red attire as late as 1922, though such reports remain disputed, leaving the true fate of mysterious Dave shrouded in mystery.